uh, theme music. Every good hero. All right, everyone, this is Tim on the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Jack Sports Talk and Entertainment. That's my theme music. Yes, it is. And that's all I got to say about that. Finally, someone figured out where that uh, movie quote came from. I'm not going to uh, divulge where it's from because I like people not knowing. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. Well, at least I think it's fun. Had a great stream last night. Really enjoyed doing it. Uh, sorry, unprofessional. I had to move the microphone. Want to talk about the Giants. Don't want to talk about injuries. Don't want to talk about their poor play. Don't want to talk about the the Oakland, Oakland, well, the Las Vegas Raiders coming up this Sunday. I want to talk about us, the fans. I want to talk about us, Giant fans. Because we're getting a bad rap repeatedly. And I don't even know if it's a bad rap anymore. I used to think, I grew up watching the Giants going back to the 70s. And you hear, I heard the stories of Chuck and Charlie Conley, Y.A. Tittle, Frank Gifford, Sam Huff, Rosie Brown. Heard all those stories from my dad. Got to watch the, the, the bad times with Craig Morton going into, you know, Armsberger and, and McVeigh and the coaches that were, that, that led the rudderless ship, we can say, for the Giants in the 70s. But you know what? The fa- one thing that was always consistent, and another thing I always noticed was the giant fan base. And the giant fan base, in my mind, back then, going into you know even up to the 2000s, was a very intelligent fan base. They weren't reactionary. They booed, they cheered, but you know what? They had the football acclimate to understand when their team was bad. And then you roll into the early 2000s with the advent of social media. And you basically YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and everything else. And it gave everyone a voice, all giant fans a voice. And then you turn around and you monetize these channels. So you make money. So what do fans do or what what do people do? They want to make money. I've said that before. You want to get the likes, the clicks, the bleeps and the bloops. And that's and, you know, and then and I think some ways that that skews your opinion. Because of the fact that sometimes I think people are making content not in, not in reference to being realistic, but in reference to being popular, making some coin. And I think that skews some of the fan base. And I think that's been going on. You know, if you really take a look at it, social media really started. The boom or the start of social media was about 2003, 2003, 2004. And it's, it's grown exponentially since then. And as YouTube gets more popular and all these other things, like I said, like, it just gives, it gives everyone a voice. And the problem is when you have a younger generation growing up on what they see via social media and not speaking maybe to their, you know, their fathers or their grandfathers or their older brothers about the sport, their opinion is formed through that medium. And the people are going to say, well, Tim, you're a hypocrite because you're on social media. You're on YouTube. Yeah, but if you ever watched my channel, I just say it like it is. And I, and I love it because I, I quoted someone yesterday in one of, my, um, one of my comment sections that said that uh, I found he thought it was hilarious that I called someone a pompous ass considering that I'm a pompous ass. But then he put the caveat in, but the only problem is you're always right. And I'm not always right because of the fact that and I'm not always right, but I'm not that I'm not, I'm not usually wrong. I'm not usually right because of the fact that I formulate an opinion by watching social media or reading the paper or listening to the, listening to the news. I watch. I've been watching sports for years, played in the sport, worked in the sport. So my 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 opinion is formulated over years of watching, seeing, understanding the game. And not going on a social media outlet and getting someone else's opinion, when a lot of times, like I said, if you look at these opinions, it's not about giving the honest opinion. It's about giving or getting the likes. I remember a couple, I remember someone sent me a video and I didn't watch it about the linebacker Smith that we drafted, how he was going to be the stalwart of the defense. How he was going to, how he was going to show us the way and how he was going to be the leader in the sacks. He hasn't even played. Same thing with the kid in Green Bay. The kid went from Green Bay when we traded Isaac Gaitam. I said he was going to be a bum because he's been a bum for two years. And he got cut. 
But now, but when we got him, it was the reclamation project that Patrick Graham was going to turn around. We're not watching his play on the field. People are formulating their opinion by listening to other people's opinions who are sitting there trying to get people to watch their videos or their tweets or their whatever they do on Instagram and TikTok. Because if you actually watched a kid play in Green Bay, you knew he didn't have anything anymore. You, 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 knew, you knew, you know, in some ways we got fleeced by giving up Isaac Yadam and Isaac Yadam's barely played. And if you want to look at something else, it's the pendulum, I call it. Every week, it's the pendulum. Daniel Jones sucks. Daniel Jones is great. Daniel Jones is okay. Daniel Jones sucks again. This part of the team's uh, Andrew Thomas. He's a bust. Andrew Thomas is not a bust. Andrew Thomas is all pro. I've said this before. The problem is people, you need to formulate your own opinion and keep with it. Now, I'm not sitting here bashing all Giant fans for this. I'm, I'm just pointing out that some follow this pendulum. Formulate your own opinion. Watch with your own eyes. See that way. And, the, and then don't attack other people who have differences of opinions than you do. Don't. Because you want to know why? Differences of opinions what makes other people look at different things. I've said it before. People have t- pointed out different things to me and I, and I, that I missed on players. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. But I don't sit there and tell them, well, you can't, that's, you know, you, you can't have an opinion. And then people will say, well, you don't change your opinion, Tim. No, I don't. You have to do a lot more than just tell me something, show me something for me to change my opinion when my litmus test is I'm watching, I'm looking. I'm not formulating an opinion somewhere else. And the problem with the Giants right now is they know their fan base is reactionary. They know it. They understand recently, the Giants, the, that the advent of social media is, is how they can control the narrative at times. If you watch the giant YouTube account, it's gone from doing a couple videos a day, uh, like two years ago, to doing like four or five videos daily. I should say a couple videos a week, two years ago, doing four or five videos daily. Because they're trying to control the giant narrative. They are trying to keep themselves high in the analytics so they can control the narrative of their organization, which is a smart thing to do because they understand that the fan base is reactionary. We could win next week, go three and six, and then you'll hear the playoff chatter again. And then if we lose, we go two and seven. I guarantee you, you'll still hear, you'll still have people sitting there, even though the team is two and seven, sit there and tell us, well, sit there and tell people, well, you know, we still have an opportunity. We still got a chance. Because no one wants to watch a video where you don't want to hear that you don't have a chance. Unless you're a subscriber to this channel. I, I challenge older Giant fans. And you don't have to be as old as me, but I challenge Giant fans whose, whose point of reference is beyond Eli Manning. And especially when you go to the games, talk to these younger fans. They probably don't want to hear it, but talk to them. Expand, your, expand their knowledge by giving them your knowledge of what you've watched over the years for Giant football. Because this has been a bad 10 years, and it's not getting any better. And more than likely, we're going to re-push the start button on this organization. But I think having a more knowledgeable fan base makes for a better fan base. If you look outside the giant bubble, and you talk to other fans from other teams, and I got, I got friends all across the country. I got friends all across the world. Good example, Dom, and if I'll talk from across the pond in the back. <laughs> Wonderful podcast. My friend Isaac over in Ireland, who I'm, he wants to do a podcast now too. I don't, I don't think my voice could hold up and do another podcast. But you, you have to just impart your wisdom. And a lot of it also is people get so ground up into Madden, Madden football. They think that's the sport. And, that, and I've been playing Madden football since the inception. I've been playing Madden football when it was on the computer and it was just called John Madden football. The very, I still have the very first version. I still have Madden 93, the original copy from the Sega Genesis. But Madden's not real football. 
I think people, we just need to, we need to, we need to have a knowledge transfer to the younger fan base and teach them not to be, and this is not everyone. Don't think I'm talking about all giant fans. This is probably maybe like 10%, 15% of the giant fan base. And stop them from being so reactionary. Stop them for thinking that every player that the Giants sign is the greatest player in, in the history of giant football. David Sills, who I had to listen to for two years, how he was Victor, the next Victor Cruz, can't even get on the roster with the plethora of injuries this team has. Because if you actually go back and watch him perform, I said this before, if you watched him in preseason, yeah, he was good. Not great. He was good against guys that were going to be working at Home Depot, the fifth and sixth stringers. But you put, a, put him at a higher competition level, he didn't show anything. And the giant organization shows that. The only people that don't see that is the fan base. The team makes mistakes. The fans make mistakes. I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. But you need to learn from your mistakes. And not learn, and I'm telling you right now, not learning from our mistakes is what's causing us to be in the same problem that we're in. Having a fan base that's so reactionary to everything is another reason that some ways we're, we're a laughingstock in regards to fan bases. I love the fact that the, the whole Jet thing. You always hear Daniel Jones doesn't have weapons, Daniel Jones doesn't have this, Daniel Jones doesn't have that. The Jets had Mike White at quarterback and down to like their third string tackle and everything else and no wide receivers and a running back, <laughs> fourth string running back, and they still beat the Bengals. And Mike White threw for over 400 yards. Daniel Jones throws for 233, 203 yards on 33, uh, 33 attempts and one touchdown. He's the Messiah for this fan base. You know how ridiculous that makes us look? Expectations need to be higher. I think the knowledge and reference to the team needs to be better. I think we need to show the Giants that we are knowledgeable fans and we're not going to take this crap anymore. Maybe just don't go on Sunday. I've never been a proponent of boycotting anything, but maybe just don't go on Sunday. Just stay home. Take your kids to the park. Take your wife out shopping. Do something. But just don't go. And see what the reaction is to the Giants when fans stop showing up and fans start being knowledgeable again. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, and if you like new news, that'd be awesome.